Hi, today I'm gonna attempt to make the largest arc of my life! Which could be pretty small compared to some arcs other people make, but it will be the largest for me! If I can actually make it. And of course it goes without saying, don't try this at home! All I need is my super high voltage generator circuit that's affecting my lights combined to something called a Marx generator. Marx generator is made of multiple similar stages of high voltage capacitors, resistors and spark gaps to make an already high voltage DC input into a super high voltage output. And I'm thinking I could probably use my super high voltage capacitor I made a while back. I made my capacitor using two layers of aluminum foil separated by some plastic that should be able to handle tens of kilovolts. And I should be able to charge it using my circuit that creates... <laughs> Clearly I haven't learned my lesson. Damn it. Burn my skin too. Handling high voltage is very dangerous and can easily kill you if you don't have a horseshoe up your butt. Maybe that's why I can't sit comfortably. Don't hold high voltage output while holding the ground. All your muscles will contract. It feels like you're hit by a truck. Ah. Be disconnected from everywhere and if you have to, touch the circuit with only one hand. Anyway, let me see if I can use my rectified voltage to charge my huge capacitor. Should just take a moment. What the f I managed to kill my self-made capacitor. See, the insulation was damaged here and the high voltage jumped between the layers and melted the capacitor. See, now the capacitor can't handle the high voltage at all. What is that? Yay. <laughs> this is interesting. See the charges are flying over air due to corona discharge, charging the capacitor enough for it to break down and repeat periodically. Yeah, sh See, air is like a very large resistor that can conduct under very high voltage due to corona discharge and it charges the capacitor to very high voltage. And the plates of the capacitor being so close at some point, they arc and short the capacitor and discharge it periodically. This is actually how the Marx generator works. Like I said, a Marx generator looks like this, with many of these stages repeating. These are spark gaps that are normally open circuit. When you place a very high voltage DC at the input of the circuit, the electric current, like a river, charges all the capacitors to the same voltage. The speed at which the voltage levels charge up depends on capacitance and resistance values that you can calculate using simple exponential equations, Fourier or Laplacian transforms for frequency response. What, you don't know them? Then head on to my sponsor Brilliant. At Brilliant, you can easily brush up on your math, science or computer knowledge by taking the courses you need among a ton of interactive courses. Like the stuff you need to understand electronics better. Why are you wasting your life for then? Get 20% off of your annual premium membership at brilliant.org slash electroboom and learn a ton of professional knowledge in very fun and simple ways. Okay, my capacitor broke, so I ordered a bunch of 15,000 volts 2 nanofarad ceramic capacitors. Let me see if I can recreate my broken capacitor situation. Here you see I put a small gap between the legs of my capacitor and now I can charge it with the high voltage to create the same effect. Well, <laughs> this was the same thing just much faster. <laughs> I guess I can increase the gap between the legs so that the capacitor can charge to a higher voltage. Let me turn off the supply first. <laughs> Capacitors hold charge and can shock you badly. Make sure to discharge them before you touch them. Here's a wider gap. It's not jumping anymore. <laughs> It seems like the voltage is now above the 15,000 volt rating of the capacitor and just jumps directly between the legs. I might have to put two of them in series then. 
Anyway, Mark's generator uses the same concept, quite a simple but smart voltage multiplier. The way it works is, imagine you have 10 capacitors like this and you go around and charge them one by one to say 100 volts. Then you connect them all in series. Now if you measure between the end and the beginning, you will have 10 times 100 or a thousand volts across it. And that's what the Marx generator does. You have these high voltage capacitors, say one nanofarad, initially parallel to each other through a bunch of resistors of one mega ohm. When you turn on the supply, the current flows and charges all these capacitors ideally to the same high voltage. Now all you need to do is to put all these capacitors in series to get a massive voltage. What Mark's generator also has are these spark gaps connected from the end of one capacitor to the input of the next and so on. And these spark gaps are basically switches. When the voltage across them, which is also the capacitor voltage, is low, they are open circuit. When the capacitors charge to a voltage level higher than the breakdown of the spark gap, a low resistance arc jumps across the say first spark gap, shorting these two points, putting these two capacitors in series if you ignore the very large resistors. The first arc jumping triggers all the other spark gaps and all the capacitors fall in series. All of a sudden, you have a huge sum of voltage that can arc across a much longer distance to ground. When I saw this potential, I said, it's for me? After the discharge, all the capacitor voltages drop and the spark gaps open circuit and the cycle continues. Anyway, in addition to my high voltage capacitors, I bought some high power large 1 mega ohm resistors. Not for their power though, just that the resistor legs have to be spaced far enough, otherwise the high voltage will arc across the resistor which we don't want. Let's put them together. Fortunately, I have these nice and round thingies I want to use for my spark gaps. These things are used on these curtain pool thingies. I solder them to a pin like this. Here's my Marx generator ready to run. This is the output of the circuit and that's the ground and hopefully there will be huge arcs between them when I turn on my power supply. Nothing? I can't hear the high voltage. Maybe my gaps are too wide. I can raise the power supply to give it more voltage output. <laughs> What's going on? Did you see that? The voltage was so high, the arcs, instead of jumping at the output, they were jumping across the resistors. Maybe I have to make my gaps shorter so the voltage drops, or maybe this gap shorter? Let's see. Hey, I have some at the output. Still jumps across the resistor. I think I have to make my gaps shorter. I made my gaps shorter now. There you go. Can I make it wider now? Ah. Start jumping across the resistor, but that's large. Here's the room a bit darker. God, this is loud. That's not bad. Sometimes it jumps across the resistor though. Higher voltage. This jump. Oh, what happened? Starting to continuously arc. They say there is another way to run the circuit. See right now I'm running my supply voltage at a lower level so the circuit doesn't trigger automatically. And then externally I can trigger the circuit. Say with my screwdriver I can short the first gap. <laughs> See? And it jumps. There you go. Which might be good because it takes a couple of seconds for all the capacitors to fully charge. So this way I can give it time to charge and then trigger the circuit. It's not bad. 
just makes me a little bit sad that I can't supply a higher voltage to make an even larger arc because my resistors are not big enough and it will just arc across them. But I have another trick. I could cover the entire circuit with polyurethane for better insulation. This stuff I put on my Tesla coil. First, I cover the front of my spark gaps with masking tape to make sure they remain exposed. Then I cover everything, especially the exposed metals, with my polyurethane. Except maybe where I want to make contacts to the rest of the circuit. I put five coats on, but doesn't look like much. Hopefully it insulates enough. I also want to mount it on a plexiglass so I can hold it vertically. I don't know if this polyurethane made it any better. I'm still oh, losing a lot of charge due to corona discharge. Oof, oof, oof. What's going on? Well, here we are. Let's see if it works. Not jumping. Do I have to trigger it myself maybe? Hey! <laughs> maybe I need to adjust the gaps again. I would say the polyurethane had a bad effect on it. I wouldn't add it next time. There we go. It is still pretty big. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Maybe I'll remake it later to make the arcs even larger. <laughs> I mean, is there ever an end to this adventure? Now you might ask, what's the point of this super high voltage generator? What's wrong with you? Can't you see she's sexy? Well, this can be used for lightning tests and some future video ideas. Subscribe not to miss them. But you know what you need to do? You need to go to brilliant.org slash electroboom. Not only to get 20% off, but because it's a gold mine of very well made interactive courses on math, science and computer. You can even download their app on your phone. So instead of wasting time commuting to school or work, you can learn about neural networks, geometry, quantum computing or whatever interests you in your own time. Brilliant is a very easy and efficient way to bring your knowledge up to speed for your next project or job opportunity. What I love about Brilliant is that the courses have visual arts and are interactive to keep you engaged. And they end in quizzes to make sure your brain gets some fun exercise so you won't forget. They really made learning fun and engaging. So don't forget to follow my link and start filling your brain with gold. And thanks for watching.